I'm Philipp Aldrup. I'm a graphic designer and photographer from Germany. I came to Singapore around 14 years ago, 2004, I think. And uh, I am about to leave again for Germany in a couple of weeks' time. So these are my last, last days in Singapore. So when I moved to Singapore, of course I was photographing the city as any other foreigner, tourist, uh, ex exploring the city with my camera, doing touristy shots. Uh, and the more and more I walked, the more I found myself attracted by the, by the spaces which are behind the nice facades of Singapore. Uh, the, the, shabby, the shabby back lanes and the the flyovers, the drains, the tunnels, for no specific reason actually. So in the end I was just picking up where I, end, where I finished uh, when I was a kid, where I, where I was, uh, I, I grew up in Berlin and in Berlin I would, I, I would crawl into any drain, into construction sites and old buildings and weird, weird tunnels and parking decks. So this had so I, I, uh, I continued with that same impulse in, in Singapore. And the more I did it, the more I felt that this, the more I felt Singapore as, as, as some kind of a body. It feels like it has a skin of, it has a nice skin of, of concrete and glass, pavement. And uh, I, I would, I guess, I would seek the spaces which, where the skin lay bare, so to say, broke off, so where you had a glimpse into the, into the body be, below the, the pavement. So, so the space we are here at the moment, like the, the flyover, it's, all, it's almost like a, like a wound with a little bit of crust. And then the crust would maybe it would really overgrow again, a new skin, but there would be a, a new layer sinking in, so it, I was very excited to be a, to be a kind of an archaeologist who's digging for all those layers. Because once you once you come to a new city, it's this is the city you know. You know, let's say 2004, I knew Singapore 2004, but uh, in the end, you would like to know a Singapore. 10 years earlier, 20 years earlier, 100 years earlier, 200 years earlier, you know? And, uh, and you can do that do his through history or uh, reading or looking at old buildings. But I was always imagining that I can, I can find something in those, in those uh, unregulated, bare, places under bridges or in tunnels where I can dig for something and I imagine I would I would find the rubble of of of, of past growth so to say and slowly peel off layers and uh, find the residue of, of earlier times and the rubble the rubble you would find, of course, it's all trash and useless, useless rubbish. But uh, there, there's some kind of. Uh, it, it also feels like it would be the. It would be some kind of unconscious uh, territory within the city, 
almost like if you would poke into the unconsciousness of, of this body, which is the city under the skin. So the rubble kind of raises and it's almost like in your own body, if you, if you, if you dig deep, if you look into yourself, you know, the, all, this, all this unclear rubble, memories, smells, uh, the thing you can't really separate, which are melted and merged into one big pool of frazzles of memories. That's, that's, that's how I also see those places a little bit. You know, you, you, could, you, could, you, could, you, you could kind of dig through the layers of unconsciousness to very old layers maybe.
is the flower. I always felt that the tidal pools, which are those pools which are sometimes filled and then when the, when the, when the water is ebbing off again, they would be dry and hold on for a while and still they can be re revived again once new water is coming in. It's almost those, those spaces feel a bit like this and I would imagine since history, memories, the past, in Singapore are so much paved over constantly. Every single day there's a, there's in the end a tiny, tiny little history uh, paved over or flattened or tear, torn down. So I would always imagine that maybe those, that maybe those memories are not gone. Maybe they, maybe they, they flow into some pools, or maybe I find them here. I mean, it's a pure, it's a pure I imagination, you know. But uh, I, I found it a, a very, I guess, a very poetic thought, which I held on to. Recently, recently, I, I read, heard something or read some some a quote by a Polish writer, and he said it's not so much about you make poetry, it's more through, through writing and making art, you try to connect to the poetic world, you know? Maybe the poetic world is just there, you know? You don't, you don't invent it, it's there. And your actions as a, and, and, and your attempts, at least, as an artist or as a writer, as a photographer, is, is maybe to, to, to find where it is. And that's why I was so happy that, uh, that for, those, for those series, for in, in this work, that I could collaborate with the observatory, with the band observatory, who could, I think, connect to that idea and also it, it resonated in their practice of, of making sound and music which is also not a pure invention or creation from scratch. You also, you also tap into something, you know, maybe you just, maybe you also just uh, find s s sounds and compositions which are in a way already somewhere. You know? Is it still running? Yeah, I have the feeling that uh, maybe as a, as a foreigner, outsider in Singapore, as much as you find your roots here, your friends, and your it's it's also your home. Maybe st still, maybe this, maybe still you are on the other side, not quite a full part of it. You know, you, you you would you would stay a foreigner, and I mean that's that for a while. That's uh, that's 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 quite. A, that's not a bad thing, you know. It can also be a very liberating thing, you know. You can little be always be a little bit uh, an outsider. You can be an observer. Maybe you don't have the pressure, the duties, the tasks you would have if you are a Singaporean, you know. So 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 it has it has a it has a very free, liberating side. Uh, but it also it kind of, or for me at least, it also made me a little bit of a constant teenager, you know. So I came here when I was maybe around 30, and now I'm 46, and I, I, I feel I uh, the the certain non-connectness keeps you also just continuing your teenager life. Maybe. You can stay here so long because you're also shying away from something. You know? Because you don't have to probably not face the more serious things uh, back home. I I'm not too sure, you know. I'm, th this is this is uh, what I'm going to find out once I once I'm back. 
but it's very easy to do that here at least to 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 stay a little bit on the on the on the surface and and the surface maybe once you once you get older you realize surface the surface is not enough you know you 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 are also looking for for some kind of depth you know and that's that doesn't mean oh i need a quiet life now settle down blah blah i think that's not the point but it maybe it maybe a depth is 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 a uh, is a certain maturity mm. which in my case maybe i uh, maybe i have a longing to find that back home i'm not sure if that makes sense at the moment but there's something there yeah. uh, 